with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said to him, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The young man replied, I will not. But afterwards he changed his mind and he went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. That young man said, Yes, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? And they answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, He's just like his old man. Have you ever heard that phrase before? We see a person, maybe they have become an alcoholic, and because their dad before them was, we say, well, what would you expect? It goes from generation to generation. The other evening I was having dinner with friends, and a young woman, whom I baptized, so I've known her for a long time, was discussing with her mother and I whether or not she would remain a Catholic. And she said, I always make up my own mind about things. And her mother said, you are your grandmother. Some things pass generation to generation. We can't help the gene pool. But one of the things that does not pass from generation to generation is our sinfulness. We don't blame or should not blame the sins of the current generation on those who came before us. For a long, long time, the people of God, particularly before the exile, used to believe that the sins of the parents were visited upon the sins of their children, and on and on and on. But Ezekiel says to us this morning, no, that is not true. You have a choice about whether or not you will sin. You are a free people, able to make choices about what is good and what is bad in your life. You have a choice about whether to be righteous or evil. And we find that in today's reading, in, in chapter 18 of Ezekiel, where he says, when a virtuous person, it says man here, but that means a man or a woman, huh? when a virtuous person turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. Now, 
What's Ezekiel saying here? Is he saying, well, you commit a sin, bop, you're dead? No. What he's saying is that you die to eternal life. If you are a virtuous person and you suddenly think, the dickens with it, it's more fun the other way, and you take the path of evil, that will cost you your everlasting life. He gives us a second example. It's the opposite way around. But if a wicked person, man or woman, turning from the wickedness they have committed does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Because those people have turned away from all the sins which they committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. And you're thinking to yourself, now wait a minute. My grandmother was a virtuous woman and she died. We're not talking about the death that we face inevitably because we're human. We're talking about the life that goes on with God. So what Ezekiel tells us today is if you make the choice for righteousness, if you make the choice to say yes to God, you will live forever. You will not die. Oh yes, you'll suffer the pain of death here on earth, but you will not die. You will live forever because you have chosen the righteous path. And Jesus says just about the same thing in his parable today. He talks about two sons. And a father, that's God, goes to one of the sons and he says to him, son, go out into the vineyard today. That's the first son. The first son says, no, not going. And the father leaves him. And as he's leaving, the son starts thinking, oh well, Better go, because if I don't go, we'll get all kinds of upset around here. So I'm going. And he goes out and he works in the vineyard. The father goes to the second son and he says, Son, go out into the vineyard today. And the second son says, Oh, you bet, Dad. I'm going right out there. You know, give me two minutes. I'm going to be there so fast you never would have seen the streak behind me. That's how fast I'm going to be there. And the father leaves him, and the son goes back to what he was doing. He doesn't go out into the vineyard. And so Jesus says to the people, he says to them, who was the best of those two sons? Who did what the father asked? And the answer is, you don't know what the answer is? What's the answer here, folks? The first, of course. The first son. Why? Because even though he grumbled, he went ahead and did it. Right? So the Lord is saying to us, you may not always be happy about choosing the virtuous path, but when you choose it, you are doing the will of the Father. When I was a young man, a kid, my dad used to say to me, Johnny, let's go and work in the garden. I used to like that for two reasons. One, it got me a chance to be on the bicycle, with my, not with my dad, but we had two separate bikes. We would drive off to our, where our garden was. It was about 20 minutes from our house. Used to like that. Used to like working in the garden. But when we would get there, inevitably he would say to me, why don't you pull the weeds? And I would think to myself, how come he gets to do all the good stuff and I get to pull the weeds? But I would pull the weeds. Now, I'm not telling you that story because I want you to know what a virtuous son I was. That isn't the point. I'm talking about the grumbling that went on before I finally started to pull the weeds. And that's what we have to do in our daily lives. What is sin? 
Sin is saying no to God. Now, we all consider ourselves to be good folk, amen? Are we good folk? Of course we are. We wouldn't be here if we weren't good folk, all right? So we think, oh, I could never say no to God. But sometimes we do. And what Jesus is trying to help us understand today is that it's important for us to say yes to God. Oh, yeah, being a Christian is not easy stuff. Being a Christian can be very demanding. Being a Christian can be very countercultural. Being a Christian can make you unpopular with some of your friends. But when we are Christians, then we want to say yes to our God, yes to the God of love, yes to the God of mercy, yes to the God who sent his Son into our world to redeem us. That's to the God to whom we say yes. But you see, it's easy to say yes to God, just like the second son. Oh, you bet. Hey, man, I'm right with you. I'm doing it, you know. I'm going to be right there. We can say that to the Lord. But then we've got to live it out. We have to do the things that the Lord requires of us. We have to say yes to taking care of our neighbors. Today is Catholic Charities Sunday, among many other things. We have to recognize the importance of saying yes to those who are less fortunate than we are. We are called every day to defend life from the moment of conception to death, natural death. How did we do in standing up for Troy Davis, who seems to have been an innocent man who was killed by the state this week in Georgia? We have to say yes to life. And sometimes saying yes to life will demand that we indeed go against what seems to be the flow of life in these United States. We have to say yes to the everyday reality of being Christian. We have to say yes to believing that marriage is a once-in-a-lifetime gig, that we cannot be unfaithful to our spouse and at the same time be saying yes to God. We are free to choose God. We are free to choose to say yes. We are also free to choose the path of evil. What Jesus calls us to do but the good news for us today is that we are free to choose what we want to do in relation to our all-loving God. And so the Lord today is asking us to say yes. He's not saying we can't grumble. He's not saying we can't change our mind as the first son did today but he is urging us to say yes to the Father. He is urging us to say yes to our God. He is urging us to say yes to a life of virtue. And when we say yes, we will never die. We will live forever.